Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Nitij and this is the fourth video in this series about UI test automation using NUnit and Selenium. In this video, I will show you how we can deal with asynchronous operations within a web page. Async operations are those which are not sequential and are generally dependent upon a response from the server. For example, when there is a validation which is occurring on the server side, then first the input value will have to be sent to the server. The server will then validate the input and then it will return the response back to the web browser. This round trip takes some time and if we are trying to access an element using a selenium or any change which occurs after the response has been received, then it will not work if our selenium code is executing sequentially without any delays. So we have to take into account the async delay of server response and then adjust accordingly. The async delay can also be related to other stuff like file access, animations, etc. Whatever the case may be, the underlying logic to handle those delays in the Selenium code remains the same. In web browsers, JavaScript has several ways to deal with async delays like promises and async functions. The usual way to deal with this situation in Selenium is to introduce a fixed delay by using .NET thread.sleep. But the problem with the fixed delay is that the async operation can either finish early or it can take some time. By having a fixed delay, we will either have to wait too much or wait too little and will move on before the async operation returns. The solution to this kind of wait approach is to use the default wait class available in Selenium. This class can be used to wait for a specific timeout value. But the good thing about this is that this class can execute an operation in fixed intervals within that timeout. So if the operation succeeds without any exception, the default wait class will stop waiting and code execution will continue. So this is kind of an optimum approach over here that we can take to handle the async operations. You will see how this will work in the example which I am about to show you. This is a HTML page which I will be using to demonstrate this code example. There is a button with idbt and get data which when called will call this get data function which is an async function to deal with async operations by using JavaScript. What this get data is doing is it is simply using the JavaScript's fetch API to call a publicly available free REST API which is this one to call and then to fetch some data. So let me just show you what this REST API is all about since I'm using it for this code example. This is the JSON placeholder website and it provides a number of different publicly available free REST APIs which we can use to test our user interfaces. We will be calling one of these REST APIs and that call is going to return a bunch of different data. But don't worry, we are not going to use any of that data returned by calling it. When this async call will be successful, then we will simply create a new div element and we will set the you know, HTML of this div with the content data received. And then we will simply insert this div after the button element, which is already there in the body. So what we will be doing is first we will fetch the reference of this button using Selenium and then we will click on it. After that, we will have to fetch the reference of this div content. But because this is an async operation, if we will be writing our code sequentially within Selenium, then we will not be able to access this element. So we will have to write the code to use the default weight class to keep on polling and checking when this div content is available. So let's just do that. This is the UI automation test project which I will be using to write the code example. If you want to learn more about this project and how its different parts are structured and created, then you can check out one of the previous videos in this series and the link of those videos is given in the description. So please do check out if you want to know how this entire project is working and is structured. So in this test async method, first we will fetch the reference of this btn get data button and then we will click on it. So let's just do that. To get the button's reference, all we need to do is to create a new iWeb element field and then call webdriver.find element by providing the ID of the button. Next, to click on this button, all we need to do is to call btn get data.click and this button will be clicked. 
So if it will not be an async operation within the web page, then to fetch the reference of the div, all we need to do is to create a new field of the type iWeb element and then we will fetch its reference similar to how we are doing it for btn get data by simply calling webdriver.find element and then providing the ID which is div content. But because this is an async operation, this will not work because as soon as the button will be clicked, this statement will be executed but in the web page the rest api is still returning from the server so this div content will not be available at that point when this statement will be called this is going to throw an exception that the element is not found on the web page to prevent that we can use the class default weight and then we need to provide the type of the web driver in this case i'm just going to provide the type interface iWebDriver because it contains all the methods that we need to use for this class let's just call this field as weight and now all we need to do is to initialize it and then set a bunch of different property values for this weight class we can initialize default weight by simply calling new default weight and then we need to provide the reference of the web driver which we are using and because this web driver is of the type iWebDriver we will be able to use the default weights methods now first we need to provide the timeout of this wait object and I'm going to provide the timeout as 10 seconds. So timeout is the time for which the wait class is going to wait and keep pulling and checking for existence of this div content web element within the web page. After 10 seconds it will stop checking and if the operation is not successful then the code will throw an exception. So we need to use a sufficiently large timeout for which we are sure that in this timeout duration the async call is going to be successful. Next property that we need to provide and set is the polling interval. So polling interval is the interval or time after which the wait class will keep on checking or it will keep on executing the code which we have provided. In our case, after 250 milliseconds, it will keep on checking if this div content web element exists in the web page or not. If it does not, then it will move on and then it will again poll or check after 250 milliseconds. If it is found, then it will simply return from there and it will not check again and the code will not wait for the remaining timeout duration and it will simply move on to the next statement. Finally, to make this work, we need to provide the exception type which this wait class or object needs to ignore. So while polling or checking the web page for the existence of this web element div content, if this exception is thrown, then this wait object will simply ignore it and then it will continue as business as usual. It will keep on checking for the existence of this div content for the next polling after 250 milliseconds. Now finally we need to modify this code so instead of directly fetching the reference of div content using webdriver.find element first we need to call wait.until method now in this we need to provide an anonymous function or a delegate of the type func this function should have an argument of the type iWebDriver and it should return the result which is going to be of the type iWeb element. So let's create a new anonymous function over here and that can be done by simply first providing the type which is the iWebDriver. So iWebDriver and let's just call it wd. Now let's just provide this methods body. In the body we are simply going to return wd.find element and then we need to provide the id of the web element we can use the by class for that so by.id and then inside it we simply need to provide the id which is div content and that's pretty much it all right so now it's time to run this test method and see if our code is working or not all right so this is the web page the button is clicked and the div content div is created and you can see that the test case has passed but how do we know that our code is working or not the simple way to do that is to simply introduce a delay in the addition or creation of this div content within the web page and for that we can simply introduce a debugger over here and i'm going to break the code execution over here after the response has been received so when the code will stop its execution over here we can wait for nearly 10 seconds and we know that the timeout is for 10 seconds so if we will wait for 10 seconds or in other words if in 10 seconds the div content web element is not created in the web page this code is going to throw an exception because it will not poll after 10 seconds so let's just do that i'm going to run this again and then i will press f12 as soon as chrome is opened all right so you can see that the code execution has stopped over here 
I don't know if you can see it but here is our debugger and now let's wait for nearly 10 seconds. Alright now let's run this from over here. You can see that the test method has failed and it has taken nearly 25 seconds to execute and because the timeout was only for 10 seconds it stopped checking after the 10 seconds and when this statement to find the div content was executed after 10 seconds then when this exception was raised then it was not ignored by the wait class and it was simply captured by the c sharp code which you can see over here no such element exception and it took nearly 25 seconds so you can see how important it is to wait smartly for the async operation to finish when we are using selenium for the web elements to find them or you know to get information to them or to do something with them and that would be everything to learn in this video thank you so much for watching it and i hope that you will find it useful please do let me know what you think about it and subscribe to the code first channel for more such videos i am nitij and i will see you in the next video till then take care of yourselves and have a great time